first thing we're talking about is the volume of a pyramid. So the volume of a pyramid is one third of the product of the area of the base and the height of the pyramid, or V is equal to one third capital B, the area of the base times the height H. Now remember, a pyramid is going to have a polygon as a base, and it's going to have lateral faces that are triangles that meet at a common vertex at the top. Now, in order to find the volume of a pyramid or the three dimensional space that it takes up, what you have to do is you have to take the area of that base, then multiply it by the height, the perpendicular distance from the vertex to your base, and then multiply that by a third. That'll get you the volume of a pyramid. Yes, now, example one says find the volume of the regular pyramid below. So here we want to find the volume of this pyramid. So we need to remember the volume of a pyramid formula. Volume is equal to one third the area of the base times the height. So the question is, what is this base? Well, it says it's a regular pyramid, meaning since our base is a quadrilateral, that our base must be a square because that would be a regular quadrilateral. Meaning in order to find the area of a square, I just need to take the length of one of the sides and square it. So five feet squared will give me the area of this base. And then I'm going to multiply that by our height, the perpendicular distance from the vertex to our base, which would be that six feet. So that's going to go in for our H right here. Now all I have to do is just simplify five feet squared is going to be 25 feet squared. That would be the area of our base. Then we multiply one third the area of our base times our height. And I end up getting that the volume of this regular pyramid, this square pyramid over here, is 50 feet cubed or 50 cubic feet. Remember, use cubic units when you're finding volume. Okay, doing the same thing. I want to find the volume of this pyramid. So how do I find the volume of this regular pyramid? Well, the volume of a pyramid formula is one third the area of the base times the height. So the first thing I need to do in order to find the volume of this pyramid is find the area of our base, this capital B right here. Well, what do I know about our base? Well, it's a hexagon because it has six sides. And because our pyramid is a regular pyramid, that makes this hexagon a regular hexagon. So how do I find the area of a regular hexagon or the area of a regular polygon for that matter? Well, that would be one half the apothem times the perimeter. So I just need to figure out what the apothem of our base is, the perimeter of our base is, and then the height of our pyramid. Well, the apothem of our base, it looks like they give us. That would be this 2 rad 3 meters. So I can plug that in for A. The perimeter of our base, because this is a regular hexagon, that means all of these sides must be congruent. So if one of the sides is 4 meters, that means all of the sides are 4 meters. So the perimeter would be 4 meters times 6 sides, which would be 24 meters. That's what I can plug in for the perimeter of my base, this P right here. Then for my H, the height of our pyramid, I plug in this 10 meters. And because it wants you to leave your answer in simplest radical form, you can't just plug it in your calculator. You actually need to multiply this out. So one half times two rad three, the one half and the two cancel each other out, just giving us rad three. Then we multiply rad three times 24. And that's going to give you 24 rad three meters squared. That would be the area of our base. Then we multiply one third, the area of our base times our height, take that one third, multiply it to the 24 rad three, and you just multiply the one third and the 24 or divide 24 by three, you get eight rad three, then you multiply that by 10 and you get 80 rad 3 meters cubed or cubic meters. Now example two, doing the same thing, we want to find the volume of this regular pyramid. So in order to find the volume of a pyramid, you need to use the volume of a pyramid formula. Volume is equal to one third, the area of our base times our height. Well, we know again that our base is going to be a regular hexagon, meaning in order to find the area of this, you need to use the formula one half, the apothem times the perimeter. Well, we can figure out the perimeter because all the sides are congruent. So that would just be six inches times six sides, which would be 36 inches. That's the perimeter of our base. But what about our apothem? We're not given that and we need that in order to find the area of our base. So that needs to be the first thing that we find here. So how do we find our apothem? Well, as you can see, when I draw this apothem connecting the endpoint of our altitude and the endpoint of our slant height, I've actually created this little right triangle in here where I'm given two side lengths, this 10 inches, one of our legs, and our hypotenuse, this 12 inches. So I can use the Pythagorean theorem in order to figure out our missing side length, our apothem right here. So again, we've said that the only value that it matters, what you plug in for is this C. Your C has to be your hypotenuse. So that has to be the side opposite your 90 degree angle. So 12 inches, our hypotenuse is going to go in for C. Then it doesn't matter whether we plug in 10 inches for A or B. I'm going to plug in 10 inches for our B and make A our apothem because, you know, I like alliteration. So what we do then is we solve for A. We square the 10 inches and the 12 inches. We subtract 100 inches squared or 100 square inches on both sides. Then to get A all by itself, we square root both sides. And anytime you square root a variable squared, on the other side, you need to put plus or minus. Now over here, the square root and the square cancel each other out. And on this side, 
side, rad 44 is not a perfect square. And because this wants you to leave your answer in simplest radical form, we're going to leave our aptham in simplest radical form. So we need to simplify this radical. We're going to break rad 44 up into two radicals that multiply together to make rad 44. One of our numbers, though, has to be a perfect square inside the radical. So that's going to be rad 4 times rad 11, because 4 is a perfect square. And I can take the square root of 4. That's going to be 2. Rad 11 is going to stay rad 11, because 11 is a prime number. And because we're dealing with measurements in a pyramid, we can't have a negative aptham, so we're going to leave A as the positive version, the principal root. And we're going to say A is equal to 2 rad 11 inches. So we can label that over here. And now we have everything we need in order to find the volume of this pyramid. Remember, the volume of a pyramid formula, we said volume is equal to one-third the area of the base times the height. And in this case, our base is a regular polygon, so we're using the formula one-half apothem times perimeter in order to give us the area of this base. So I can take my apothem, which is 2 rad 11 inches, plug that in here. I can take the perimeter of my base, which we said was 36 inches, because that's 6 inches times 6 sides, plug that in for P. And then the height of our pyramid we see is this perpendicular distance right here. That would be this 10 inches, so that goes in for H. We then need to simplify this because it wants it in simplest radical form. We can't just plug it in our calculator. So 1 half times 2 rad 11 inches, the 1 half and the 2 just cancel each other out, giving us rad 11. We take that, multiply it by 36, that gives us 36 rad 11 inches squared. That's the area of our base. Then we multiply 1 third, the area of our base, times our height. The 1 third times 36 is just 36 divided by 3, which is 12. We get 12 rad 11 times 10 gives you 120 rad 11 inches cubed, or cubic inches. That would be the volume of this pyramid. Okay, doing the same thing. We want to find the volume of this regular pyramid. And in order to find the volume of a pyramid, you need the volume of a pyramid formula. Volume is equal to one-third the area of our base times our height. Well, since this is a regular pyramid and our base is a quadrilateral, we know our base is a square. So we can easily find the area of a square. It's just the length of one of the sides squared. All we need then to find our volume is the height of this pyramid. Oh, we're not given that. We're only given the slant height. So the first thing we need to find here is the height. That will help us then find the volume. So how do we find the height here? Well, similar to the last example, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an apothem that connects this endpoint of our altitude and this endpoint of our slant height, thereby creating this right triangle here. And in this right triangle, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to help us find our missing height. The only issue is when using the Pythagorean theorem, you need two of the side lengths. We only have one side length. So how do I find this missing side length? Well, because this is a regular pyramid, that means this altitude drops from our vertex smack dab in the middle of this square base. Meaning if I were to draw an apothem going to the side over here, the length of this apothem is going to be half of the length of one of the sides. So if this whole side length is eight feet, this apothem then would be half of that, which is four feet. Now I have two of the sides of a right triangle, so I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find our third. So remember, in the Pythagorean theorem, it only matters what you plug in for your C, your C has to be the side length opposite your 90 degree angle, your hypotenuse. So I'm going to take this 9 feet, plug that in for C. That means 4 feet can go in for your A or B. I'm going to take 4 feet, plug that in for my A because that's my apothem, and then my height would then be my B. So in order to find my height, I solve for B. So I'm going to square the 4 feet and the 9 feet, subtract 16 feet squared on both sides. Now to get B all by itself, I have to square root both sides to get rid of that square. And whenever I square root a variable squared, on the other side, I have to put plus or minus. Over here, the square root and the square are going to cancel each other out. And on this side, 65 is actually a prime number so there's no way to break that up any further it's just going to stay a rad 65 and because we're dealing with the height of a pyramid we can't have a negative height so we're just going to keep the principal root the positive version and say b has to be equal to rad 65 feet now we can label that in our figure over here and we can go about answering the question which was to find the volume of this pyramid so in order to find the volume of the pyramid you need to know the volume of a pyramid formula volume is equal to one third the area of the base times the height so the area of the base Remember, this base, because it's a regular pyramid, this base would be a square. Meaning, to find the area, I just take one of the sides and square it. Then, I multiply that by the height of this pyramid, which is rad 65 feet. So, all I have to do then is multiply this 8 feet times this 8 feet to give me the area of my base. Then, we multiply one third the area of our base times our height. And now, because this question wants you to round your answer to the nearest thousandth, all you have to do is just plug all of this in your calculator. Press enter, and you end up getting that the volume of this pyramid is approximately equal to 170. 71.995 feet cubed or cubic feet when you round to the nearest thousand.
Now let's talk about the volume of cone. So the volume of cone is one third the product of the area of the base and the height of the cone, or V is equal to one third the area of the base, capital B, times the height, H. So just like the lateral and surface area formulas for a cone, the volume of a cone formula is the exact same as the volume of a pyramid formula, except in a cone, we have a circular base. So you could replace this capital B, the area of our base, with pi r squared. That's the only difference between the volume of a cone and the volume of a pyramid. It just has a circular base. So you could memorize this formula instead for the volume of a cone, but I just like having one formula to memorize for a cone and a pyramid. So I'm going to leave it like this. Now, example three says find the volume of the right cone below. Round your answer to the nearest thousand. So in this cone, we have a circular base and it's a right cone because our altitude is perpendicular to our circular base and the vertex is directly over the center of our circle down here. So in order to find the volume of a cone, you need the volume of a cone formula. Volume is equal to one third the area of the base times the height. So in order to find the area of this base, because our base is a circle, we need the area of a circle formula, pi r squared. So what is the radius of the circle? That would be six feet. We can plug that in for r what is the height of this cone that would be 24 feet that's going to go in for h so all i have to do now is simplify six feet squared is going to be 36 feet squared multiply that to the pi i get 36 pi feet squared that would be the area of our base we then multiply one third times the area of our base times the height and we end up getting that the exact volume of this cone is going to be equal to 288 pi feet cubed now this question doesn't want the exact volume of this cone in terms of pi it wants your answer rounded to the nearest thousand so in your calculator you take 288 multiply it to pi round down to three decimal places and you get the volume of this cone is approximately equal to 904.779 feet cubed or cubic feet. Okay, doing the same thing. Want to find the volume of this right cone. So in order to find the volume of a cone, you need the volume of a cone formula. Volume is equal to one third, the area of the base times the height. In our figure, we look, our base again is a circle because it's a cone. So in order to find the area of our base, we need to use pi r squared. Now in this figure, it gives us the diameter. It does not give us the radius. So we know the radius is just half of the diameter. So our radius here then would be six meters. We can plug that in for r. The height of the cone we see is eight meters. We plug that in over here. Then we just square the six meters multiply Apply that to pi, we get 36 pi meters squared. Now we have one third, the area of our base times the height. So all we have to do is just multiply these together and you end up getting that the exact volume of this cone is equal to 96 pi meters cubed or cubic meters. But this question doesn't want the exact volume. It wants you to round your answer to the nearest thousand. So in your calculator, just take that 96, multiply it to pi, round to three decimal places and you get that the volume of this cone is approximately equal to 301.593 meters cubed or cubic meters. Now example four, doing the same thing. We want to find the volume of this cone. In order to find the volume of a cone, you need to use the volume of a cone formula. Volume is equal to one third the area of our base times the height. And in this figure, our base is a circle. So to find the area of a circle, we use pi r squared and we are given the radius. Perfect. So all we need to find the volume would be the height. Oh, we're not given the height of this cone. So how do we find the height? Well, as you can see, the height, the slant height, and the radius of this cone all form a little right triangle over here. So in order to find our height, we can again use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And in the Pythagorean theorem, it only matters what you plug in for your c. Your c has to be the side length opposite your 90 degree angle. So I'm going to take this 17 inches, plug that in for my c value. That means my 15 inches can go in for my a or b. I'm going to plug it in for my b and make my a the height of this cone. So let's solve for a. So I'm going to square each of these, then subtract 225 inches squared on both sides. Then to get a all by itself, I'm going to square roots both sides. And anytime you square roots a variable squared, on the other side, you need to put plus or minus. Now the square and the square cancel each other out over here the square root of 64 is 8 and because we're dealing with the height of a cone we're just going to keep the principal root the positive version and say a is going to be equal to positive 8 inches that's going to be the height of this cone now that i know the height of the cone i can find the volume of the cone like we were trying to do so volume of a cone formula that would be volume is equal to one third the area of the base times the height and we said our base is a circle meaning to find the area of it you need to use the formula pi r squared our radius we see is 15 inches that's going to go in for r our height we just found to be 8 inches that's going to go in for h we then square our radius multiply it to the pi and we get that the area of our base is 225 pi inches squared now we take one third multiply it by the area of the base multiply it by the height and we get that the exact volume of this cone right here would be 600 pi inches cubed or cubic inches but this question doesn't want the exact volume it wants you to round your answer to the nearest tenth so we take 600 multiply it by pi in our calculator round to one decimal place and we get that the approximate volume of this cone is 1885.0 inches cubed or cubic inches 
Okay, doing the same thing here. We want to find the volume. In order to find the volume of a cone, you need to use the volume of a cone formula. Volume is equal to one third the area of the base times the height. And in this figure, our base is a circle. So in order to find the area of the base, we use pi r squared. So we are given the radius. Perfect. That means the only other thing we need in order to find the volume would be the height of this cone, which we are not given. So that would be the first thing that we need to find. Well, just like last time, we can see that our altitude, the height of this cone, with our radius and the slant height have created this little right triangle. So we can again use the Pythagorean theorem in order to find our missing height well we're given one of the sides of this triangle what would be this side what would be our slant height well since it's a right cone we know that both of these slant heights would have to be congruent to one another so if this is 10 centimeters this must also be 10 centimeters so we can now fill out a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared remember in the Pythagorean theorem it only matters what you plug in for your c that has to be the side length opposite your 9 degree angle so we're going to take this 10 centimeters plug that in for our c value that means 7 centimeters can go in for a or b i'm going to plug it in for our a value i then solve for b that would be the height of this cone so i square the seven centimeters square the 10 centimeters then subtract 49 centimeters squared on both sides i solve for b by square rooting both sides of this equation and anytime you square root a variable squared on the other side you need to put plus or minus now over here the square root and the square cancel each other out we just get b is equal to and on this side 51 is a prime number so you can't simplify that any further and because we're talking about the height of a cone we're just going to leave it as the principal root the positive version we can't have a negative height of our cone so we get b the height of our cone is equal to positive rad 51 centimeters so we can label that over here and now we can find the volume of this cone remember the volume of a cone formula is volume is equal to one third the area of the base times the height and we said our base is a circle meaning to find the area of this base we need to use the formula pi r squared our radius is seven centimeters that's going to go in here and the height of this cone we just found to be rad 51 centimeters so that's going to go in here now we square the seven centimeters multiply that by pi and we get the area of our base is 49 pi centimeters squared then we multiply one third the area of our base times our height and in our calculator we round that to the nearest tenth and we get that the volume of this cone is approximately equal to 366.4 centimeters cubed or cubic centimeters now example five says the figure shown is a regular octahedron each face is an equilateral triangle with a side length of three rad two inches find the volume of the regular octahedron so a couple things i want you to note here first would be that this regular octahedron is just two pyramids stacked on top of one another we have one pyramid up here one pyramid down here and they share the same base so because it's a regular octahedron we know that this base would have to be a square so we have two square pyramids so in order to find the volume here i'm just going to find the volume of one of the pyramids and then multiply that by two that should give me the volume of this entire regular octahedron so that's what we're going to do we're just going to find the volume of this top pyramid so in order to find the volume of a pyramid we need to use the volume of a pyramid formula volume is equal to one third the area of the base times the height well in this figure over here if we're just looking at our top pyramid we see that we are given the height it would be three inches so that's easy we just need to find the area of our base that's the only tricky part here because we know that our base is a square we just need the length of one of the sides and then we can square it that'll give us the area of the base well is there any in the question that could help us figure that out well it says each of the faces are equilateral triangles so if we know that one side of this triangle is three rad two inches don't we know that this side length and this side length and this side length and this side length would all be three rad two inches because they're all equilateral triangles yeah so i can label this side length as three rad two inches meaning that the area of this square base for each of our pyramids here would be three rad two inches the quantity squared so all i have to do then is just square that in order to square this you square the three and you square the rad two so three squared is nine rad two squared the square root and the square just cancel each other out you get two so nine times two gives you 18 inches squared that's gonna be the area of this square base right here then i take one third multiply that by 18 inches squared and multiply that by three inches our height and that gives us the volume of the top pyramid which is 18 inches cubed or 18 cubic inches so now that i have the volume of the top pyramid remember we said that each of these pyramids are congruent to one another so in order to find the volume of the entire regular octahedron i just take the volume of this top pyramid multiply it by two and i get that the volume of the entire octahedron is going to be 36 inches cubed or 36 cubic inches and you're done